The Israeli military claimed to have neutralized a number of aerial threats but did not identify the perpetrators. Welcome, everyone. In today's video, we're going to tell you Yemen officially started attacking Israel. The Houthi militia from Yemen said on Tuesday that it had tried an attack on southern Israel and that it had fired a big batch of drones and ballistic and cruise missiles against Israeli sites. But before we proceed with the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember to go ahead and hit the bell icon to subscribe so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. According to Yahya Saria, the Houthi military spokesman, the iron-backed militia launched the attempted attack in reaction to what it described as brutal Israeli-American aggression in Gaza. Using the social media site XM, Syria warned more missile and drone attacks and stated that the incident was the third action in support of our suffering brethren in Palestine. The Israeli military reported on Tuesday that a surface-to-surface -surface missile fired against Israel from the area of the Red Sea had been intercepted by its aerial defense system. Other aerial threats in the region had also been intercepted, it claimed, but none of them had reached Israeli land. The attacker's identity was kept a secret by the Israeli military. However, a senior U.S. Department of Defense official said under anonymity that Israel's military had intercepted missiles with a 12,100-mile range that were fired from Yemen. Despite being prevented, Yemeni observers said the strike showed the Houthis growing capabilities. The Houthis are an iron-backed group who seized control of the country's capital Sana'a in 2014, now controlling much of northern Yemen. The organization came close to defeating a military coalition led by Saudi Arabia but was ultimately defeated. It has grown to be a crucial component of Iran's alleged axis of resistance, which also includes military organizations in Iraq and the Lebanese militant Hezbollah. Ahmed Nagy, a senior Yemen analyst at the International Crisis Group, stated that the Houth is entering the battlefield, even in a symbolic manner, sends a strong message to Israel, an unequivocal indication that a new force has emerged against it in the region. One of the main tactics employed by the Axis of Resistance, which is intended to confound Israel and impede the widening of its ground military operations in Gaza, is to diversify the sources of assaults against Israel. According to him, hostility toward Israel and support for the Palestinian cause have long been central to the Houthi narrative. Leaders of the Houthi movement have repeatedly threatened to enter the conflict since the Israeli military started bombarding Gaza on October 7 in retaliation for attacks carried out by Hamas, the armed organization backed by Iran that rules Gaza. The prime minister of the Houthi administration, Abdulaziz bin Tour warned last week that Israeli ships could be attacked by the Houthis in the Red Sea. Though Houthis were unable to even launch drone strikes in 2015 with a Saudi military campaign in Yemen got underway, according to Farah al-Muslimi, a research fellow with Chatham House's Middle East and North Africa program. However, with Iranian assistance, they increased their capability in the years that followed. Three people were murdered in Houthi assaults in Abu Dhabi, the capital of the United Arab Emirates which is more than 700 kilometers from northern Yemen last year, according to Daniel Suleiman, a research fellow at the Harvard Kennedy School's Middle East Initiative, who specializes in Iran's axis of resistance. Israel has started to perceive the Houthis as a threat in recent years after a prominent Iranian nuclear scientist was killed in 2020. Israel installed Iron Dome batteries close to the southern town of Eilat because of fear that threats would emanate from Yemen. The speaker stated, according to Mr. Suleiman, that Israel must now dedicate capabilities that otherwise would have been used elsewhere due to the possibility of Houthi strikes on southern Israel. However, it is unclear how much of a threat the Houthis pose to Israel. According to Mr. Nagy, even with their increasing military prowess, the Houthis govern a severely impoverished region that has been severely damaged by conflict. In contrast, the Israeli military is fully supported by the U.S. government and possesses state-of-the-art air defense systems. Another aspect of the Houthis battle with Saudi Arabia was this asymmetry. Though Houthis launched about 1,000 missiles and drones towards Saudi Arabia between 2015 and 2021, most of them were intercepted, killing about 20 people in total, according to Saudi officials. In contrast, experts estimate that around 20,000 people were killed in airstrikes carried out in Yemen by the Saudi coalition, many of which were carried out by squadrons with assistance from the United States. Houthi missile launches at Israel risk reigniting the war in Yemen. 
The Houthi rebels, who hold the upper hand in military affairs in Yemen, run the risk of trapping both Yemen and themselves in an increasingly severe cycle that would cause the combat to pick back up. Although the Houthis do have armed drones and missiles capable of reaching Israel, it is unlikely that either will be able to get past Israel's air defenses. The most recent hostilities by the Houthis won't affect the Israel-Hamas conflict, but they might lead to American and Allied retaliation in response to any airstrikes. The Houthis are likely to launch more missiles and drones, some of which may be directed towards Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, deep within both nations' borders. The Houthis have effectively targeted locations, including crucial energy facilities. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates are still engaged in the Yemen conflict and will need to react to any attacks led by the Houthis, perhaps by resuming their own bombings. Iran is an ally and source of material and technical support for the Houthis, a Shia group. They are nevertheless anchored in Yemen's sociocultural structure. Iran has less influence on the Houthis decision-making than Hezbollah does. Iran has the ability and the willingness to restrict Hezbollah's and its allies' operating scope. Only the highest-ranking members of the organization have access to the Houthis' most senior leadership, which makes all significant decisions. Aaron might not have known that the Houthis were planning to fire missiles at Israel. The Houthis' domestic grievances are the primary motivator behind their decision to deploy drones and missiles toward Israel. 80% of Yemen's 32 million people are under the organization's control, and dissatisfaction is growing among this group. There are some weaknesses in the Houthis Power Foundation. Even if their brutally effective security services still hold sway over most places, Yemen's economy is in ruins. Its rail, which is split between government and Houthi control, is falling and since 2016, public sector salaries have not been paid on a regular basis. Yemen's severe economic issues are not the only thing fueling hostility. The Houthis have recently taken steps to formally consolidate their top-down control over northwest Yemen. The Houthis declared the National Salvation Government to be dissolved on September 27. The leader of the Houthis, Abdul Malik al-Houthi, stated that fundamental reform to be launched with the restructuring of the government was necessary. In many ways, the speech and the government's collapse represent a rejection of Yemen's Republican past. The General People's Congress, Yemen's previous government party, which the Houthis allies, is also excluded from Abdul Malik's proposed reforms. Many of the increasingly destitute Yemenis under the Houthis control are enraged by their risky endeavor to formally entrench their control over northwest Yemen. The goal of the Houthis missile and drone launches at Israel is to divert Yemen's attention away from their inability to provide economic opportunities. On the other hand, the Houthis are quite aware of how many Yemenis will view the launches, at least initially. Yemen, like much of the Muslim world, has a high and growing anti-Israel sentiment. Even Yemenis who do not live under Houthi authority may find favor with the Houthis plan to attack Israel. The Houthis are also eager to strengthen their reputation as part of the resistance. Iranian material and financial support for the Houthis, although frequently overstated, is significant. Iran has helped the Houthis create an extensive and expanding array of missiles, mostly made in their own country, as well as armed drones for the air and sea. Ironically, Iran is at a disadvantage due to the Houthis' growing proficiency in developing and employing drones and missiles with ever longer ranges, as well as their opaque decision-making. The Iranian administration is not particularly interested in a regional conflict, despite its rhetoric. Iran's economy is in delicate shape, and the leadership is dealing with serious domestic dissatisfaction. Prior to Hamas's assault on Israel, bilateral negotiations between the Houthis and Saudi Arabia were progressing well. Iran quietly supported these negotiations by applying pressure on the Houthis to cooperate completely with the Saudis. The Houthi dominance of northwest Yemen is a challenge for which the Saudi leadership acknowledges that there is no practical military solution. Rather, the Saudis made an effort to interact with the Houthis leadership in an effort to encourage more moderate members of the group. Simultaneously, the Saudis have continued to back the internal opponents of the Houthis, the internationally recognized government and certain forces affiliated with it. The Houthi missile launch and their threats to attack ships crossing the Red Sea are expected to put an end to or temporarily halt negotiations between Saudi Arabia and the Houthis. The likelihood of an accord between Saudi Arabia 
and the Houthis is fading further if the Houthis attacks persist, which is likely they will. Regrettably, the Houthis capacity and readiness to escalate the Israel-Houthi conflict would only fan the flames, worsening the situation for Yemen and the surrounding area. Due to a careful distribution of power among adversaries, Yemen's warring parties have managed to prevent a resumption of widespread violence even after the truce in April 2022 expired. This balance of power will be disrupted by the Houthis activities and the justified response that the U.S. and its allies may rightfully demand. And that's all for today's video. If this occurs, the long-suffering Yemeni people and the larger region will face dire consequences as the combat throughout Yemen picks back up. Any fresh assaults on the Houthis by foreign forces will guarantee the dominance of the hardliners who are rising within the group. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.